<laughs> John Gruden when he gets fired. Finish your he's point. He's not on, making it to Vegas. Finish your point on Mahomes. Mahomes always had. This Shout out to Mikhail, the only Chiefs fan I've ever met in my entire life. Michael. Yeah. Yeah. And Devontae Towns, the only Chargers fan ever. Actually, no, I went to high school. One of my high school teammates was a Chargers fan, but whatever. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, honestly, is who I thought he was. He has tremendous passing skill set. Out of Shut tech, out of the Texas tech, fuck no, up. I knew he was going to be great. Your, you have never said Patrick be. Mahomes and great in the same sentence until today. You don't watch Shut college your football. Ass up. You don't watch Shut college football. You Shut don't watch college football, up. so you don't know what I said. But I said it. I've I sat across from you every single week, damn near, for two, four years and heard you slander this man. Did you? For two. It, first off. For two years. First off, I've heard I, you slander, slander him I slandered for two Cliff years. Kingsbury and how he handled the Baker Mayfield situation and the fact that all his quarterbacks transferred and ended up in the NFL. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Uh, Davis Webb ended up in the NFL. Baker Mayfield ended up in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes ended up in the NFL. I'm just glad he's not Logan Thomas. Yeah, that was a fail. Oh, but Virginia Tech quarterbacks are never going to be good. There's only like two, Mike Vick and Ty- Tyron Vick? Taylor. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Get out. I'll finish the show. Speaking of people who never got a second chance. Shout out to him snitching on his brother, but, you know. He didn't snitch on his brother. His cousin yeah. snitched on his brother. I thought he snitched on him. No, nah, his cousin snitched. He definitely got called to court, though. I don't think he did. I think his whole family got called to court. I'm pretty sure God snitched on Michael Vick at one point. That's how everybody was snitching on Michael Vick. Shit was foul. All y'all I'm pretty. Bur- I'm pretty sure. On Michael Vick, I'm pretty sure. Future hell. Future was in Goody Mob snitching on Michael Vick. I'm pretty sure Goody Mob snitched on him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, Two Chains snitched. On I'm pretty him. sure Organized Sound snitched on Michael Vick. Wow! Now you went too far. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna be like, "Who the fuck are they talking about?" <laughs> Learn your Atlanta hip hop history. That's why this podcast is so great because you learn shit by listening. to I don't think people. Sleepy Brown snitch though. Sleepy Brown didn't snitch. Nah, neither did CeeLo. Uh, I don't uh, know. CeeLo, CeeLo, might CeeLo has that Al Sharpton. I probably snitched. And I, got some <laughs> I got some vanilla wafers with some pudding and rub my stomach while women fed me uh, strawberry covered oh, bananas. Oh shit! <laughs> he has that vibe. Wearing a fucking tunic. Yeah, yeah CeeLo yeah. Green's a snitch. He has that fifth trust, element vibe. I don't trust any. He has that fifth element vibe. Yeah. <laughs> he has that Lando Calrissian, but like a fat Lando Calrissian vibe. <laughs> like he definitely snitched while some girl fed him grapes. Some like emaciated girl fed him grapes. Who she, Actually, she needed the grapes more than him. But he's sitting there with like, yo, grandma's old ass tunic dress on. That nightgown. Y'all all know that nightgown. Black people, y'all all know that nightgown. I don't even need to go any further, but we all know that nightgown, and that's what CeeLo Green be wearing. You can't be trusting people like that. CeeLo Green probably snitched on somebody. Will I am too, because Will I am be snitching and snooing everybody. But anyway, um, yeah, Mahomes at Texas Tech put up stupid numbers, and he was just different. Like he had the he has the athleticism. His dad was a baseball player. He literally can fling it like eighty five yards. He can make any throw you want. Athletic. And pretty much controlled the line of scrimmage when he was at Texas Tech. And they actually were running the ball with DeAndre Washington at that time. Shout out to DeAndre Washington not working and the Raiders passing on Jordan Howard out of Indiana who rushed for 2,000 yards because he went to UAB and then transferred to Indiana because UAB got rid of their football program. And, yeah, the rest is history. And the Raiders passed on him and Tevin Coleman. But that's a whole other story for another time. I got that notebook, and I can literally recite from 2013 to now all the fucking draft picks that the Raiders missed out on because they're stupid and their, ta- their talent department or whoever you want to call their scouts are stupid. But anyway, <clears throat> Mahomes is going to be here for a while. And Re- Andy Reid was the perfect guy to bring him along. Like, Mahomes kind of gives me a young Aaron Rodgers vibe. With how stop, bro. He has weaknesses. I'm tired of no, it. No, no, no. He has weaknesses, but his coach, in this case, Andy Reid, is like the goat when it comes to so is Patrick Mahomes a Stephen Curry of the NFL? He's Stephen Curry with um because I was thinking about that this week. Like he's doing things that you shouldn't be able to do that you're taught not to do. Like do with his left hand, and he's doing it. 
threw with his left hand. And, and out- he's excelling at it. And he's literally changing the game. And he's light-skinned, baby-faced, and probably going to be pushed by the NFL. Who knows? And he has Colts the, might even trade for him. He has the voice of like a about, rusty psh. carburetor. It's the voice of a Muppet. Bruh. He has the voice of a Muppet who literally just got out of rehab. A Christian rehab. A God he has the rehab. voice of a Muppet stuck in the sunken place. He has the voice of a Muppet that is asked by another Muppet, where did the Muppet touch you on the Muppet? <laughs> God damn, that was good. That was good. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. Holy shit! Damn, that was good. <laughs> but yeah, man. Speaking of young quarterbacks, quarterback I want to talk about Josh Rosen. He actually chosen Rosen got his first start last week. Um, after coming in for Sam Bradford and Damn. Sam Bradford being petty as fuck about it, which we didn't get to talk about last week, but yeah. And being the third string quarterback now who's making $20 million a year. Mike Glennon is the second string quarterback making $8 million a year. So they have $28 million in quarterbacks who suck and are never going to amount to shit. When they could have used that, gave, um, what's his face, David Johnson a little bit more money and, you know, made some trades, gone after some free agents. And actually got a receiver and stopped relying on Larry Fitzgerald to just beat Father up, Time. Just rack up numbers and play in the slot. Like, honestly, at this point, Larry Fitzgerald's a tight end, in my opinion. He's not a receiver anymore. He's not beating anybody deep. Sorry. Like, everyone's... Yeah, if like, I would have told you Larry Fitzgerald would outplay Charles Johnson, would you believe it? Yeah. If I would have told you that 10 years ago, yeah, would Larry you have Fitzgerald believed it? Was nice, bro. He almost yeah, but, won a Heisman. But he to in. outplay him and he came before him? Wait, Charles Johnson out of Penn State? No, the Megatron. Oh, Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson, Fucking sorry. get everyone's name wrong. Yeah, sorry. My my, my brain is fried today. I knew that sounded wrong when I said it, too. Is it the CTE? Yeah, probably. And there's a, there a Charles Johnson in the league, or there was one, but he was there. Shout out to Steve Breston, wherever he is. Steve Breston was... Steve you've Breston mentioned was, Steve Breston on this podcast way too much. And you've only, only mentioned him... Yeah, only <laughs> so way twice. too much. And the, and the first time I mentioned him was because you mentioned him. Cardinals number two receivers number outside three of receiver. Anquan number Bowen. Outside of Anquan Bowen should never be mentioned. David Boston like, should never be mentioned. Exactly. Larry Brackett. Like never we've be already mentioned. talked about Christian Kirk too many times on this podcast. He's gonna be good though. Larry Brackens should never be mentioned. Arena League football star. Any of the Browns? Not the St. Browns. The Browns who the like three John Browns that they've had at the Cardinals. John Brown, uh, Malcolm Floyd. I forgot about Malcolm Floyd. We just don't discuss Malcolm Floyd. Minnesota's not that proud of him. Okay, but yeah, Josh Rosen. He only had like a hundred yards and was like, I think like twenty five of thirty seven or something like Can that. Can we admit that they ruined? They were already ruining this kid early. They should have just let him start from the get go. But actually, Sam he would have completed trash. more passes. But they had a lot of drops. Number one well, and number two. Your boys at Pro Football Focus actually gave him a pretty high rating of like 85.7 and like 84.7. He made a couple of like tight window throws. Because he is the best. Whatever the fuck that means, because that's subjective as fuck, but somehow they quantify that. But yeah, I digress. Point is. The Pro Football Focus hate is back with Pete. It's not it's not hate. It's it's not hate because It's definitely not liking. They provide a service that's needed as far as advanced analytics. And as far as giving, like, the league a way to measure and grade players on a consistent scale, the problem I have with it is that the average reader, consumer, even journalist or even scout doesn't exactly know their methodology, which makes it more of an opinion than a fact, but people use it as a fact. And even I have used it as a fact. So, yeah, I'm part of the problem. But, yeah. I, I, I try to use football outsiders more because I actually understand their methodology because they actually compare players to an average player and they basically have a whole algorithm set up that weighs what an average player in the league is at that position and then compares that player. Yeah, look it up, football outsiders. Anyways. Got that off your chest? Yeah, I did. Feel better? Yeah, I did. Good, good. Josh Rosen. Classes in session. I vaguely heard that. That was weird. 
Josh Rosen has he 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 has everything as advertised. It's just a matter of uh, are they going to ruin him, like you mentioned before, or not? And can him and Kirsten Kirk are they the future? Are Kirsten they going to be Kirk. able to work through the, through that? Yeah, but you got to build the offense through David Johnson again, and they kind of did that versus Seattle, even though they lost. I think they lost that game. But, yeah, Rosen should have been starting from day one for the Cardinals. And the, the Cardinals is just Stephen Kime. He's making – he made some bad decisions. You don't give Stan Bradford $20 million. That's just stupid. When is he ever proven he's worth $20 million? He All he does is what he did at Oklahoma, complete a high percentage of passes and maybe one or two big plays. But that's so few and far between, it's like what – it's not even worth it. And then he's hurt. Like, shout out to him. Like, Native Americans should be proud of Sam Bradford. Because he totally, he finessed the white man so hard. Like, it should be taught in the history books. Like, for real. And honestly, it's a deserved finesse. Because you know what? He went to Oklahoma, set all his records, won a Heisman, got shitted on against much better competition, and then, you know, hey, now he's in the league. Journeyman. Backup QBs, man. There's going to be a 30 for 30 on that one day. On just all the highest paid backup quarterbacks. Or like a football life. Did you Sam honestly Bradford. think Stafford would be better than Sam Bradford? Yeah. Stafford is good. He proved it. I mean, they lost last week and he completed 80% of his passes. Stafford is good. Not if you listen to Dominic Sue, but we'll get to that later. Oh, shit. <laughs> all right. So do you want to talk about college football now or you want to talk later. about it after? Later. Touch- Cause I saw, later, because I saw some shit that's going to go into my rant that uh, white-ass Bette Miller said that really has me angry. All right. so Should I say it now? Just get this out of, off my chest or just wait? It's up to you. You can get to it after the game or you can get to it before. Okay, I'm going to just time out the world real quick. Um, and we'll get to we'll, I'll finish this in my rant. But Bette Midler, this white chick, white actor, she said, Women are the end world of the world. Raped, beaten, enslaved, married off worked like dumb animals, oh denied education and inheritance, and during the pain and danger of childbirth and life in silence for thousands of years, they're the most disrespected creatures on earth. First off, I hate when white people say something is the N-word of something else, but I'm going to get to that at the end of the show. I agree with that, for sure. Definitely. That part that I just said I or agree what the whole thing part. she said? I agree with the part that you just said. Because women are the N-word of the world, so but... So then you really just took a shot on black people. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, you really did. Yeah. White people. <sighs> anyway, go ahead. No, go ahead. Say what you're going to say on the whole fucking random tw- tangent tweet that you just I saw mentioned. this on Instagram and it really got me upset. I was All right, like, so talk about it. <sighs> you brought it up. Okay. And this is going to touch into that, that white uh, principal that got fired. We didn't talk about this last week. Oh, my God. That white principal go, that got bro. fired. This is shit that I really don't want to talk about. But it happened. Like, it's legit. We have plenty of NFL shit we could actually talk this about. But if you really feel like to Deshaun that justice, Watson. All right. Talk about it. I talk, Fine. All right. But anyway, I just hate when white people say shit like that. Because it shows they really don't care about the black struggle and black people. When you say something is the N-word or something else. And it's like, if you can't say the actual word... Maybe that's a really horrible thing to say. You didn't even say the whole word. You just said women are the N word. Are we going to talk about what white people have done to black women, like dating back to slavery? Do you want to talk about how you, you know, killed their kids? Anyway, never mind. Um, yeah. Fuck uh, God and other people. Anyway, so um, that principal, I'm not even going to say his name, but he pretty much said black quarterbacks are just unreliable, not very good. Said some really embarrassing stuff about black quarterbacks in Houston. And in case you haven't noticed, what, there are two teams in Texas that play football? Professional teams? And they both have black quarterbacks? black quarterbacks? Yep. One's darker, but Desha- well, Deshaun Watson's darker, but still. Uh, no, he's definitely... He's, he's, they're no, in he's, the same He's bracket. darker. No, he's definitely darker. He's definitely... Oh, no, no uh, what's his face? Um, Dak Prescott, his dad is incredibly dark. Like, darker than me. And his mom was white. God bless his dad. Shaw Watson, I think, is a black mom and a black dad. But he's just a little bit lighter. But a little bit darker than than Dak. Oh, my God. The heartburn. Wow. So, uh, yeah. He got fired for saying that. Wait, 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 wait. I have a side by side. 
that no one can see.